Long ago there was a normal house in the small township of Denton. On the street of Oak sat a manor named after its keeper, Lord Shipley. And Shipley Manor was a place of great merriment, bold song, and chicken dancing. But one night in particular continues to live on in the hearts and minds of all who are present. It is so famous that people who were far away claim they were at Shipley Manor. Gather ye now to hear the story, back in time, back. It was not a leap year, but it was a single night of great leaping. February 28th, 1981. And the night brave combo merrymakers crashed the manor and sent Lord Shipley scurrying to the local La Quinta. Listen close to the words of Lord Shipley and one of the band merrymakers. As they recount the manner and that winter night of February. Where we are? Uh, we are now sitting in the front bedroom of Shipley Manor. That's what I call it because in 1977, my dad bought this house for me and a bunch of my roommates to finish up college in, and. We were supposed to pay him rent, God bless him, and we probably paid him 300 bucks in four years of owning it. So, um, but anyway, uh, it, it's turned out that it's one of the oldest houses in Denton, and uh, it has gone through several changes since I've owned it, but back when uh, my dad bought it for us, we were all in college, and. Uh, one of the roommates, Charlie Tunstall, he comes in from class one day and he said, uh, hey man, I'm studying 16th century feudal law in Europe. And uh, it's all about lords, ladies, and manor houses. I say that this is our manor and we need to name it accordingly. And so anyway, I, uh, um, Mr. Carl. Hey, bud. <laughs> so anyway, Charlie comes in and he said, uh, we have to name it. We're not common, ordinary rabble. We are lords and we're ladies. And... Take your pick. <laughs> we had a bunch of ladies come through here. But uh, I told Charlie about this recurring dream I had where, uh, hey, Carl, hey. hey. Carl, Carl Finch just walked in. Uh, hey. Founder, founder and lead man of Brave Combo, the famous group that was playing here at Shipley Manor the night that the floor caved in. Yeah. So we're getting a story from from me about how I acquired. Is this the room or is that the room? That's the room in there where the floor caved in. Yeah, yeah this is it. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I knew it was a little. I mean, I've been in here. The people have tried to tell me it was this room. No, this is my bedroom. This is it sacred. Not this room. This, Definitely this not. is sacred ground here. Right. But uh, we put two hundred people in there. How about ten thousand at the party? How do you put 10,000 people in it? I mean, this, I mean, as I remember it, it yeah. was just sardines in yeah. the hole. What we could do is... Yeah, and we're also talking about the way that, uh, the way that I acquired the house. And my dad was good enough to, to buy this house from Curtis Loveless. Okay. And, do you uh, know that name? I do know that name. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's an attorney. Right? Uh, right? Yeah, cool means uh, yeah, it probably does. Yeah, yeah because he he. He was the he name. Passed away man. In like what, twenty years ago? Correct, the father. Yeah. Oh, okay. The son, I think. Uh, Curtis was the guy that got stuff done. Yeah, he was a mover and shaker. Anyway, uh, my dad said Lawyer. he Lawyer. said he would pay a down payment for me to get me a decent house to live in. He said get something big enough where you could rent rooms out to roommates. And uh, you could bring in enough money to send me some money. 
and uh, I found this house, and it was tw they were asking twenty one thousand for it, and my dad said, um, I, I said I found a house, and he said, how much is it? I'd already told him. I mean, he'd already told me that he would pay the down payment. And I said, it's 21000 And he said, no, not the down payment. How much is the house? How much are they asking? I said, 21000 He said, I told you to find a house that was nice enough for you to live in. And I said, it is nice. You've got to see it. He walked through this place, and he goes, my God. They only want $21,000 for this place? It's like rock solid, you know? Yeah. Now, the wiring was real messed up. It was... It had little insulators going up the walls, you know, and it had one light bulb hanging from the ceiling in every room and with a thing that you pulled on it, not even a switch on the wall. Yeah, it was ghetto, but that's the first thing I did is have the whole thing rewired. You could do whatever you wanted. Yeah, it was great. I mean, you yeah. couldn't, well, that's, yeah. not, that's not really a problem. Well, anyway, the, the deal is uh, my dad my dad bought it. We started living here, and we were really having a good time. And uh, Charlie, 1977, uh, Charlie Tunstall was one of my roommates, and he'd been studying 16th century um, literature and stuff, and he was learning about the feudal law system. You know, lords, ladies, manor houses, etc. And so uh, he said, you know, that is the coolest thing, the feudal system. He said, you know, in this town, we are lords. We are above the rabble. And this house is not just a house. It is our stronghold. It is our manor. And we need to name it. And I told him about this recurring dream that I've been having about walking down this old dirt road and it looked like the english countryside there were sheep everywhere no electricity no cars and i walked down into the middle of this little town and i turned right every time i turned right at the crossroads into a pub same pub same dream and when i walk in everybody goes yeah you know it's like he's here right. and they're all they act like they know me and I walk over to the bar, and the bartender just turns around and pulls this pewter mug off the wall, fills it with this dark grog, slides it down to me like he knows me. And as I pick up the mug to drink, I notice on the side it's engraved, J.P. Shipley. Now, he's explaining this to me. You never heard of the bit. Oh, okay. this. Oh, yeah. Because he was telling me Shipley Manor. I know his name is John right. mm -hmm. Faust, and yeah. he drives a hearse. So this guy is yeah. coming to me then with this. And I, who the hell is Shipley? Right, I Shipley mean, was the name of the house. Like, have you talked to him a lot? I mean, it's it's, it's, it's a roller coaster. Guy, yeah, um, it's a know, roller coaster. Yeah. yeah. But <laughs> Charlie just said, <laughs> you, you know, know I mean? right in the living room. <laughs> Right where your bar so, is. I don't want to interrupt you, but just now, this is 40 years plus. Of yeah, us. yeah, way to go. It is. And we don't know anything. Is that right? Nobody knows anything. He doesn't know anything. I don't know anything about anything. Oh. We're just bungling around. He's throwing out Shipley Matter, but your name's not Shipley, and it is attached to this dream, and he drives a hearse. Yeah, among other so things. This but this is not normal. We, we <laughs> Sorry, but People in town here, people in town commonly called this down here because it was industrial down here, yeah. but a bunch of them had to come by here because it used to be the Denton County Probation yeah. Department across oh, the street. Yeah, right. So they knew right where we lived. Right. And my grandmother owned a nursing home and she closed it out. And in our warehouse, she had all these hospital beds and these uh, wheelchairs and they were antique. You know those wicker? Yeah ones so we brought three of those wheelchairs up here and we would take our gin and tonics in the afternoon we would roll out on the front porch and get in a little row and just talk about life and drink our gin and tonic but here's the thing all the people that would go to the probation department 
we would say we lived here and they go, oh, in that handicapped place? Aren't all those people like, <laughs> isn't it a halfway house or something? Like <laughs> yeah, no, it is. Yeah, they're handicapped. They put a handicapped yeah, so right there. Like, what? God, this house was still kind of singular, right? I mean, no, was there was a big house, house next door and I bought it. Yeah, I was, I was on my way to buy the whole damn block. It? I had lunch with the mayor of Denton. Which Me. Was that? Uh, his name was, it's, uh, what's her name? Uh, Marcella and uh, Carrie's dad. I want to say, not Stuart, it's. Uh, I'll remember it if you can think of it. Yeah, I know. I'll Did think there, of it. Was there a swimming pool here? We put it in. Yeah. You put the swimming pool Yeah, because pool? It, there was an ad in the. Sunday TV Times yeah, magazine, and it said in-ground swimming pool, uh, $3,900. And Domingo, the Venezuelan guy upstairs said, Wow, man, for $3,900, we can put a swinging pool in. And so we all did the collection thing. How much you got? Well, between us, we had about 20 bucks. <laughs> And he said, I can pawn my dad's Rolex at McBride's. He'd give me 500 and you can call your grandmother, Lily. She'd give you 1000 Maybe we can go take them 1500 and they bring us a swimming pool. And that's exactly what we did. We took them 1500 bucks, and they brought the pool with all the stuff out here and said that when we paid them the balance, they would put it in the ground. Well, we just, we called uh, Calvert Grave Service in Denton because they knew my dad and they dug the hole. And one of our friends was a plumber and he did all the plumbing around the side of the pool before we put it in. And, oh, you actually pumped it in? Yeah, and so Golki. No, go, <laughs> no, 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 it was, I wish I had pictures. It was so damn nice. Cool. But the uh, Golki's building materials was right into Oak oh, here. Oh, it sure was. Yeah, oh, how yeah. Well, and, but Golkies brought over this uh, wash <laughs> sand. They brought over this wash sand, and a guy from Golkies taught us how to put the sand down in the hole around the swimming pool huh. and tamp it in so that there wouldn't be any air bubbles. And, man, we poured concrete around it, and about three weeks later, the guy from the swimming pool company came over to get his swimming pool because we hadn't paid for it. No, he couldn't get it out of the ground. <laughs> we said, no, it's yours. Go ahead, take it. You can have it. When did, the, when did Mike Bridgewater move in? I have no idea. So, did you two, uh, so I knew people that lived here. Probably after. after. Yeah, yeah. No, it was yeah after. There's, a, there's a photograph of the people that moved in after we moved out. Where? Yes. Right yeah, that girl's we, name. We, we reenacted the photo, too. Oh, <laughs> my God. God. Yeah. They moved in. They were they, they were living down here during that party. Yeah, it was because I just right, sold the right, house right, and right, I was living a couple, upstairs. A couple, of those, oh my God. a couple of those folks still come in, come in regularly once a year, twice a year. Yeah. Well, how many claims do you get for people that said that they were at the party? At uh, this party? Yeah, yeah this party. Uh, uh, I, I probably, besides from John, I probably heard the story. Uh, probably. <laughs> 7,500, 100 different people. Wow. He's probably said, I mean, he's probably heard it, 10,000 people. And Carl, Carl can tell you, yeah. he, he said, I can't believe how many people come up to me and say, I was at that party. Oh, all the time. So yeah. tell us about the party. Okay, okay. Um, so we're fast I pretty forward. much what, what year, what year did that party happen? I was no. on the The first party street. happened in 1978. Oh, yeah. The first party happened in 1978. And it was called a class reunion, not the class reunion. And it just meant a class group of people, which is, there was nobody with class that ever came to it. But anyway, that happened in 78. There was one in 79, one in 80, one in 81, one in 82. Uh, but, um, uh, it was usually our biggest party. We had three parties a year. We had the costume gala and the summer gala event and the class reunion. The floor caved in in 1981. That is the very first class reunion invitation. We had and we had no contacts between here and there. We mailed these out. We had a mailing list of like 500 people. We didn't have a vehicle. We 
were hauling our shit around in our open. Uh, That's wooden, uh, the summer a gala event a eighty. Even like going to Dallas and Fort Worth, yeah. we had an open wagon. If it rained, we had to cover. Here it is the stuff. second so we annual class reunion. And, and if you notice, grab them who is your host? You know, you just do it do says that. right there, Lord Shipley is your host. You could bring this with you and get all kinds of benefits. If you're lucky, you get to spend the night with Lord Shipley. Yeah. Yeah, I have some of these. Do you really? Yeah. Do you know how rare they are? I'll, I can pro well. Look at this. I know they're postcards. That's the coolest thing. <clears throat> and this These one. Postcards. So, oh, you do? Yeah. They were oh, invitations. Well, you know. And this. This, looks this guy different. right here is my alter ego. That's Lord Shipley. And okay. when I'm telling you, I was not a humanitarian. This is not the one. I this had. is who I saw when I looked in the mirror, oh, and that's an evil individual. Was this the event? That is the costume gala number two. This is not the. This is the. No, no. no, no I, this I don't. Isn't the one I, have. I don't have yours for that part. Yes, I do. No, there were three bands playing at that party that night. We started off with two not so famous bands, <laughs> who who played for beer, and then we came into the high caliber, brave combo. And this was 1981, so they'd been established for, what, a year or two? A year and a half. year and a half, 1981. They pulled down this huge fee of $400 for a party. And I said, how about let's make it five? Because I wanted them to think I was rich, and I had to go scramble for the extra 100 bucks. <laughs> but anyway, the point is... Uh, I knew Carl from playing down at Benny's and different things like that and knew how great Brave Combo was. They came in and the place lit up. It went, it went nuclear because they play nuclear polka. And so the whole place started bouncing up and down and all of a sudden we heard crack, crack, crack. And the room where the band was and everybody was jumping up and, up and down dancing started to cave in and it was almost like the walls started to move a little and i had my girlfriend and my sister on each arm and i had a room reserved at the la quinta downtown and i said i'm out of here let's go and i looked at carl and he kind of had a panic look on his face and that's the last time i saw him till, <laughs> till i saw him at benny's yeah, like so, three months <laughs> later <laughs> Inside, just, All right, I'm out. See how well, yeah, <laughs> but I mean, you, we had been through, to this point, uh, 11 kegs. Oh, wow. And we had a pickup truck going back and forth. Corkscrew? Yeah, down to the corkscrew. We'd get two, ke two <laughs> kegs at a time. And uh, there were guys out there that were masters at the art of floating, floating those kegs, you know, and getting more juice out of them, you know. Have you ever floated a keg? Oh, yeah. Okay, well... You have to be broke to do that because <laughs> that's the real headache part down in the bottom there. But anyway, the point is when I took off in a fit, of, a rare fit of cowardice, uh, I took off and left Carl here with it along with a bunch of my other friends and had a great night's sleep. Uh, and Yeah, the next day we came down, we had it fixed by two o'clock and I would like to say the guy's name, Mike close dear friend who's passed on now jim cunningham he came in here and with some help we got under the we got under the house and jack jacked up the joist patched the joist and we put a a post under it and there was no way it was going to move and to my knowledge it's been that way since we fixed it and that was 1981 so however many years that is but anyway, that's uh, that's a story of the the floor caving in at a great party at Shipley Manor, and uh, this place, and those three guys. It was Lord Shipley, Sir Charles, his loyal knight, and Domingo, the Venezuelan guy upstairs that didn't understand either one of us. He couldn't figure out why we wanted to call ourselves Lord Shipley and Sir Charles. All he wanted to do is drink all the time and welcome in the new uh, Puerto Rican co-eds. 
but uh, that's what we did. We, we got through college that way and uh, we lived in this great old house. We, and it, it seemed like we were here forever. And we were only here for like three and a half to four years. We had a, we had four years of great times. I mean, even when we were flat, broke, busted, we were we were having a giant party here with everybody just walking in, bringing beer and stuff, and we would just throw it in big tubs and throw ice over it and just have a blast. Because uh, if Brave Combo hadn't been so damn famous, they never would have got paid that big money. <laughs> Because this we, last what we've been paid. yeah, yeah, he was getting to me. He really did. He went up a hundred bucks. Now, when I, I'm sure I, I would like to say this: before. when I, when I made the deal with Carl, I was working for a limousine service as my only real steady income, and there would, there would usually be limousines out in the front yard, parked in the front yard, and I asked Carl the night of the gig. I said, "Hey, Carl." do you want me to send a limo for you guys in the band? And he said, why? <laughs> and I said, well, someday maybe you will get used to riding around in limos and being very, very important. But I want you to get your mind wrapped around the fact that you're going to be rich and famous someday. So you know what? One out of two is not bad. He's very, very famous. <laughs> Carl Finch is an artist and a famous guy around Denton and around the world, especially in Tokyo and all over the Asian countries. Actually, Carl told me he was directly responsible for bringing coronavirus <laughs> into the States. <laughs> so you can blame this guy in the red hat over here. Oh, anyway, quality. okay, is that good? Okay. Whatever the memories you have. Okay, let me let me think back. Uh, well, uh, this guy John Faust uh, was getting in touch with me, and uh, he he was talking to me about what he wanted to do. But he was talking. He was a storyteller too, so he was kind of just an entertaining guy to watch. Even back even back then, you still had your style. And so I'm hearing about Cadillacs, I'm hearing about hearses, I'm hearing about, uh, his name is John Faust, but I'm hearing about Shipley, and I'm thinking, is your name Shipley? And so I'm, then there's this story about a dream, and uh, anyway, so uh, I, I, I don't, I, I see, I think I remember the $400, I think I remember, I don't know, five. well, you, I remember that you, we got paid five, yeah. but you went up, I mean, that was a rare thing. Yeah, because I thought you guys were Well, I appreciate, well, he was... He was full of praise and loved Brave Combo, and, and, he, and he's right, you know, Benny's was the epicenter of things. And I think a lot of people don't realize, too, that, man, we were out rocking and rolling until 2 in the morning all the time, all the time. Clubs closed at 2. Benny's closed at 2. Midnight was packed, yeah. and people were out on the street at 2 in the morning everywhere. And that's after. Uh, I know that when we were started playing uh, Benny's, we had to play till two. Yeah. And, and and every place we played till two, all the way up till two o'clock. Some places we would go till two fifteen, two thirty. I don't know when everybody got wimpy about late nights. Like suddenly everybody thinks midnight's You're a late. I mean, I that's what I that's the hardest thing. Anyway, this has nothing to do with that, but. Uh, just a, you know, so you get a little feel about this. We're just everybody was just doing what they were doing by the seat of their pants. You know, you had an idea and you just followed through, and the times and the the vibe allowed you to do it. And there was just crazy stuff everywhere. So uh, it, it wasn't weird that we were asked to play a party, but it was just weird dealing with him because he's it's very vague. Things are vague and. In a, a story, in a story land, you know, and, and he's uh, engaging and it was fun to be around. So we finally got down to what we were going to do. And I knew it had so I kept hearing something about a reunion, but I never really got that. I don't remember loading in, but we were in that room. And uh, I think we had the band was sort of set up all over the room. Like it was the drummer was 
maybe in the door and the bass player was somewhere and the horn player. Uh, and it, it started filling up and it just kept filling up and kept filling up. As I remember it, every room was full. Yeah. And that that one was just beyond sardines, was people stacked on top of each other. And so we were playing and I do remember, I think we were playing My Girl Lollipop because it's, it was a ska thing. I know it was a ska yeah, thing because it was yeah. gung, 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 gung. And people liked that song at the time and we were playing it a lot. I'm pretty sure it was that. Um, and I was with a, I was with... Our version of that song. Our version, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh yeah. Yeah, you're not a 50s rocker. <laughs> no, I, I, uh, well, Little Millie Small recorded the big hit. My boy, my boy, lollipop, pop, 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 pop. You make my heart go. And then we thought, hey, what if we made it My Girl Lollipop? And then rather than uh, kind of a reggae beat, do it more of like a, like a, a rock and ska beat. So um, anyway, and then we, we had that idea. And then there was a British band, Bad Manners, who was a popular British ska band, had the same idea and did the same thing. Put out My Girl Lollipop the exact same time we did. You would have been it, it, night. Yeah, well, they weren't either, but <laughs> I mean, but they were, you know, they were leading the ska, but one of those leading bands in the ska movement in, in England. Anyway, so uh, I was with uh, my friend Karen, and she was sitting on the, uh, this PA speaker I was standing on, and then I looked down at her, and she got looked frightened, and I think I looked over at Lyle, our bass player, I think he looked frightened. And I wasn't on the floor, so I couldn't feel the floor turning into jello. But I looked up, and I, man, I, this is how I remember it. The walls were doing, doing like this. It just, and then uh, uh, I, I think several people thought. Did some of your equipment start to slide? It was, everything seemed to be moving to the center. But the place was full, so you couldn't really tell. But, uh, and I just said stop, and then it, we stopped, and then people ran out. <laughs> Famous run out the door uh, that you thought should have stayed. <laughs> <laughs> just the owner's sister in the building. Uh, Did we already get paid there? Did you already get paid yet? Uh, I don't know if we got paid yet. I think I had to come the next day, and I think everything. Did yeah? I got paid already. <laughs> yeah. I I never had a problem with him. He was an honorable fellow and lived up to his word. But uh, I have to say, I have to say, uh, your bizarreness and cool energy and vibe is what got me excited about this gig. Just so you know, because I couldn't get a handle on you. you I just didn't have the time to fully research who you were. So I know I do is Cadillacs, hearses, your name is not Shipley, and at this place, and I, I, it was a vague story, Nonetheless, here we are, we're doing it, we're all here, it's happening, and we didn't know that that night, you know, I certainly enjoyed, I, I enjoyed you a lot, I enjoyed talking to you a bunch, I mean, we had little conversations here and there that, we, you know, uh, both of us had weird stories to tell by that point, and, you know, neither of us knew really what was going on at all, I was following my nose, I, that's, that was my only, <laughs> yeah, I wanted to, <laughs> I was in a way, I was learning a lot more than I thought I was going to, uh, but then I did find out, I mean, somehow I did touch base the next day, we all, I found out what happened pretty quick, and I found that it was getting fixed, this place feels good, oh, it, did. It, yeah, it, it did then, and it's, it's still just, you know, people it's tell you that right. all the time, right, I mean, yeah, for sure, yeah. this is nice. Very nice. You know? as possible inside and try to keep the, uh, just the whole feel of the house uh, as is. But I've always loved the big windows. Yeah, sure. You know, I mean, there's nothing like this yeah. in town. Oh, for sure. Well, and we met the uh, Saul's family. He came by a couple times. He's passed away now, but his name is uh, uh, Bobby. Uh, Sam Saul's. He was oh, the, uh, the youngest kid. Uh, his parents bought it in 1933 for. Uh, fifteen hundred dollars. Wow! Back in the day, there, and he uh, yeah. he said uh, his mom was very, very uh, never would let his his father bring alcohol in the house because she despised alcohol and yeah. she's like 
So he's like, should be rolling a great and now train right now. If it's, if it's, if it's, if it was a bar right now, and, and we've always talked talked about having ghosts in here, and they've actually named the ghost Charlie. I don't know if that, how, I don't know how they yeah. got that, or it's one of the or Charlie Tunstall. Yeah, still. yeah. Uh, Sir Charles. But yeah, you were talking about sitting on the front porch, and that's that's kind of my favorite and kind of most most people's favorite place because oh. people watching peaceful. Oh and yeah. it's an old house. Isn't it? it's, it's cool to just sit and watch cars drive by, watch people walk by. Watch, just watch Absolutely, just watch that's. I mean, that's kind of. That's you don't have that in very many places sure. in town. That's just free and. Relax. Uh huh. Yeah. You really don't. I know. Uh, well. Good man. That's uh. I can't remember much more. I did know some people. I knew people who moved in here.